So a few weeks ago, a subscriber on the YouTube channel asked, how can one do research and write a research paper? And so this can be broken down into two further questions, which is the first one would be how to select a research topic. And the second one is how to write a research paper, which particular software should be used. And so let me answer the first question, which is how to select a research topic. And so in order to select a research topic that you would like to do, the first thing would be to gain an understanding, a very thorough understanding of the field of your study. And so how can you do that? You could do that by, for example, searching the literature. And this process is known as literature review. And there are ample literature databases that you could search from. And so the typical one that you could use in the life science would be PubMed. Scopus database, which contains not only life science papers, but also those in the social sciences as well. Another good search engine would be Google Scholar, which would allow you to search for general research paper as well. And it should be noted that Scopus is behind a paywall, which means that you will need subscription from your university in order to use it. Another resource could be the archives or other preprint servers as well. And so archives are known for providing articles that are in preprint form, which means that the article has not undergone any peer review process. And so they are submitted right at about the same time that they have been submitted to other journals for consideration in publication. And so whichever database that you use or search engine that you use to find research papers, the next thing would be to keep a note. And I would recommend to use Notion or any other word processor such as Google Docs or Microsoft Word or even Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. And the reason why I prefer Notion is because you could create a database in there. You could easily transform the database into various websites if you choose. And there's a lot of customization and also text highlighting that you could do to it. And so as you take your note, the things that I normally would do would be when you read a paper, you would summarize it in only a few sentences about the key highlights of that particular paper. And because there are so many papers out there, it is impossible for you to read all of the papers. And so you are more than feel free to choose whichever paper that you think are interesting to you. But before reading the paper, I like to do this. I like to make a mind map of the whole field based on the topics of the article title that I see. And so let's say that you have searched for a particular keyword. Let's say that you're interested in machine learning and drug discovery for Alzheimer. And if you use those keywords in your search, you want to make a mind map of the concepts that you see. And so for example, you could make a mind map and say, okay, Alzheimer's disease, and then you could have a branching out and then you would say target protein, and then you would have other target proteins. Uh, for example, if there's a protein A, B, C, D, E, you just list it out. So you just branch it out. And aside from the target protein, you might want to make note on the methods that were used, either experimental method or computational method. And for experimental method, you want to list out what experimental methods were used. Methods one, two, three, four, five. And for computational methods, which methods were used? One, two, three, four, five. And so by doing that, you have a high level overview of the entire field. And so that's the first step which is to take a bird's eye view of the entire field by doing literature review. And so the second step is to identify the gaps in the knowledge. Which particular area that you see by analyzing the mind map, which areas are still missing something? And the tricky question is, how do you know that it is missing? And so if you're searching for Alzheimer's drug, and let's say that in a prior project, you have done something on breast cancer drug, and let's say that you have done another one on antifungal drugs. And then for the antifungal drugs and the anti-cancer drugs, which topics are normally done that you see are in common when you compare it to the Alzheimer drug? Okay, so if th these three fields, if you compare it, what are the similarities that they all have? And then you want to find what are the differences that they do have. And so the gaps in knowledge could arise from the differences of the three fields of study. 
right? Like for example, if let's say that in the anti-cancer or anti-fungal drug research area, they typically have interpretable models, but then in the Alzheimer drug area, there's no report of any interpretable predictive models. Then you might identify that is a gap in knowledge. And that could potentially be a novel area that you could provide value to the field of study. And so those are the two major concepts that I would recommend when you're doing a review of the literature, which is to do a thorough review so that you could identify the gaps in the knowledge. And once you have identified the gaps in the knowledge, then you would perform the experiment. And using the gap of the knowledge, you would formulate a hypothesis. And then based on that hypothesis, you would prove it to be true or false via experimentation. And once you have done that, you want to publish that paper. And so the next question is how to write a research paper. And so the components of a typical research paper is comprised of the article title, the name of the authors, the affiliation, which is typically on the first page. There's the abstract, which is the content. There's the keywords, like for example, data science, machine learning, drug discovery, anti-cancer. So the keywords will be indexed by search engines so that other people could find it easily. Aside from that, there's the introduction, which provides the background about the paper. So the necessary background knowledge for readers to understand the essence of the entire paper. And then there's the materials and methods, which will typically talk about how the experimentation was performed, how the data was collected, which machine learning algorithms were used, which parameters were used, whether they were optimized or not, and which data analytics approaches were used to analyze the data. And then the next part would be the results and discussion. And so in the results and discussion, you would see the results table, which summarizes the data. And aside from that, you're going to see figures, data visualizations, which further summarizes the essence of the data. And then in the discussion part of the results and discussion component, you're going to make sense of the results table and the results figure. By making sense means that you're going to deduce some conclusion about it, some newfound knowledge that you synthesize based on the results that you observed. Whether you observe a new mechanism of action for your drug that you have done research on, whether the knowledge that you have discovered in this paper, did it contradict prior published work or does it coincide and goes together with the prior research? And then finally, in the conclusion section, you would summarize the entire essence of the paper, which is quite similar to your abstract, but then you're taking a look into the future as well by identifying future trends, what should be done in the future. And then finally, you have the acknowledgement section where you could thank your team or anyone who supported the research work, such as the funders of the research project, the university for providing facilities. And finally, you would have the references section where you cite the relevant papers that you use in the introduction and also in the results and discussion or materials and methods section. And so there you have it. That's the essence of a research paper. And so how do you actually write it? Well, there are several approaches. You could use a typical Microsoft Word. And in order to maintain the reference, that's a bit tricky. You would use either Mendeley or EndNote software, or you could go onto the cloud and use Google Docs. And so if you're going to the Google Docs route, you could use Google Docs in combination with SciWheel, which will manage the reference component of the paper. Or you could also use Latex by using Overleaf, which has a built-in reference manager. And so in my own research group, I typically use Google Docs, Microsoft Word, and the Overleaf. So all three options. So depending on the student who selected which options to use. And so the most difficult one would be the overleaf. But then I, I really like the overleaf part because it provides very nice rendering of the final PDF output. And for some research journals, they provide a template that you could use and that pretty much formats the article to look like the actual research paper. And so that might also look nice as well. And a great thing about Latex is that once you have already formatted on overleaf, when you send it out for publication, the editorial office will like it because typically they use latex already for their format setting. And so another one would be the motivation that comes from having seen the 
formatted article that Overleaf has done. And I've actually made a video on how to use Overleaf for writing a research paper. And so I'll provide that link in the video description. And so if you're finding value in this video, please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and also hitting on the notification bell so that you'll be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.